Stereo photography requires that two images are taken of the subject from slightly differing viewpoints, mimicking the action of human eyes. This can be accomplished with a single camera, using it to make two sequential images and moving its position in between, a process known as cha-cha. Alternatively, it can be done with a camera apparatus having two lenses. For normal general photography, such a camera will have its lenses set around 65mm apart, the average separation of human eyes. This separation is known as the stereo base. The Fuji W3 and my Canon Ixus 800 twin rig are good digital examples of such a camera. With this lens separation, a good stereo effect will be obtained for objects two metres and more from the camera, but in the middle and far distance the perceived depth will be small. Closer than two metres, such as might be the case for a portrait, there is an exaggeration of depth distorting the subject's features. Look at the face of little Jane here on the right. For portrait work, a smaller stereo base is advantageous, and the Lumix 3D1 with a 3cm stereo base is well suited to such work, producing portraits with a well-balanced stereo effect, though it produces rather flat results in general photography. With a stereo base of 2cm, the Sony Bloggy camera works well for close-ups of flowers and similar subjects. You can use a camera which has its lenses set further apart than 65mm, maybe even several feet apart. The effect is to enhance the perception of depth of objects in the middle and even far distance of the picture. This presents challenges in how to exclude the foreground but can be very effective. Such pictures are known as hyperstereos. My Ryko 35R twin rig with a stereo base of 13 cm gives a mild hyperstereo effect and is very effective in landscape shots, which still have a foreground. Alternatively, one can use the cha-cha method, but move the camera a greater distance. The clever Fuji W3 digital stereo camera has a mode in which cha-cha operation is enabled where the first picture remains dimly on the screen to enable aligning the second picture with the first in handheld mode. These three pictures are examples taken with the W3 in this way. There is a rule of thumb for what to include in stereo pictures called the 1 in 30 rule. This says that if your camera stereo base is B, then don't have your subject closer than 30B from the camera. For example, for a 65mm stereo base standard camera, 30B comes out at 1m95, just under 2m. Strangely enough, this rule is not in response to the problem of exaggeration of depth in a close subject it is addressing excessive deviation of distant points in the two images. If you take your 3D glasses off for a moment, you will see in this image that the two images of the statue in the foreground are almost aligned, almost perfectly overlaid on one another. However, the chimneys in the distance are apart quite significantly, and this is known as parallax deviation. If the deviation of distant points becomes too great, the image becomes very uncomfortable to view. One's eyes feel as if they're being pulled. Just remove your 3D glasses for a moment and look at the separation of the two images of the bridge in the background. That is far too big and is why this is so uncomfortable to view. Following the 1 in 30 rule controls this problem. And in this picture, I was breaking the rule by having the closest part of the boat about two feet from the camera instead of over six feet. 
With the introduction of digital stereo, some very talented software designers came up with a program called Stereo Photo Maker, or SPM, and they provide it free of charge. This clever program is like a Photoshop in 3D, and it permits the alignment of the left and right images, cleverly removing vertical height errors, rotational errors, errors of magnification, barrel distortion, and so on, all of which may be present to a greater or lesser extent, particularly when using char-char or homemade twin rigs. And it will carry out this alignment process automatically on a whole batch of photos. To illustrate this, I have picked a particularly extreme case, an image taken on my Canon twin rig at the near full zoom. Again, take your glasses off and you will see the massive vertical error between the left and right images. And this is how it looks when SPM has done its alignment. Not a great picture, but at least now viewable. Here is another picture which has been given the SPM alignment treatment. In this case, there is further manual adjustment required using SPM to correct a remaining problem. On the left, the railings are coming in front of the picture's frame as they cross it. We call the frame the stereo window, and the situation with the railings is what we call a window violation. SPM allows us to move the two images horizontally in relation to each other. Moving the images apart has the effect of moving the railings behind the window, making the picture much more comfortable to view. Some parts of the picture can, if desired, be allowed to come through the window for added impact, provided they do not cut or violate the window's frame. This cactus is a case in point. It is well through the window, but its pot is violating the window frame. I've used SPM to push it back a bit, and now we have an acceptable image. I should mention here that this image breaks the 1 in 30 rule, but I have solved the problem of distant point deviation by composing a picture with no distant points. The tabletop is as far away as it gets. There may be some distortion due to being too close, but hey, it's a cactus and it's fun. Next I have a hyper stereo taken using a Fuji W3 using the cha cha method with about a three foot stereo base. This is what SPM had as input. If you look closing each eye in turn or take your glasses off, you'll see that my camera alignment was far from perfect. Just look at the white tent at the top of the screen. Here it is though, after SPM has had a chance to align it much more comfortable, and you can now see the enhanced stereo effect in the building depth. I am still unhappy with the sloping horizon here, so I'll use SPM to rotate the image. There, that's better. Now all I need to do is to clone out the stray tourist from the right-hand image, and all will be well. Actually, I think we'll leave that for a later date. For comparison, here is an image of the same subject taken with a 65mm stereo base. Nearly flat in contrast to the hyper stereo, isn't it? Well, I think that's enough now on equipment and techniques. Time to move on.